Well, we're pleased to say that Rachel joins us now. It's so lovely to see it. And we've got so many Oscar questions to ask you. But let's talk about that clip there, because this is a white gold. And this is the second series, isn't it, that you've, you've joined into. That's so right, if, yeah. if anybody hasn't seen it, just explain a little bit about where we're up to so far. Sure. So white gold is a comedy set in the 80s in Essex in a double glazing sales firm called Cache Windows and Doors. And it kind of follows the unscrupulous power mad sales team and um season... centers around vincent swan, centers around vincent it? swan who's head of sales and of course my character joe scott comes um, in he's a con man he's a tax dodger um he uh he, he sleeps around and then you know he has his loving wife uh, uh, sam i think it is isn't yeah it? sam played by lindsay Cocker. Wife. yeah yeah so uh, so that uh, at the beginning uh, at the end of the last series they were um beginning to put things right um, and uh, and so you start this series as as a as a new salesperson. So how sure. do you fit into the role? Sure. So I I get hired by Walsh, who's the big boss of Cache Windows and Doors, as the new head of sales. So you know, much to the disappointment of Vincent and the rest of the sales team, there's a, there's a woman boss, and it's mm. 1985. So um, that puts everyone's back up. And I think she really goes. She really has her eye on Vincent and goes head to head with Vincent and is uber ambitious and just as awful and unscrupulous as he is, actually. She's but great, brilliant right? fun to play. I mean, she does not care what people think about her at all. Oh, no, she really, really doesn't. No, I mean, she's just sh shamelessly unapologetic about the whole thing yeah. and, and just goes, so kind of goes after what she wants. And she's a great businesswoman. She's really good at her job. Is but... there a bit of chemistry between the two of them? Um, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Is it chemistry or is it just power that, that they're both after? Or is after? it just lust? Such an alpha that they're both sort of vying for power, so yeah. it may just be that. <laughs> so it is the 90s, 80s there, as you've just said, and she does come up against uh, some sexism within sure. that role. Um, do you think that's what makes her that, that person? Do you think that's what makes her so strong that she's has sort of ha have to be like that? Yeah, I do, actually. I think it's, you know, and especially like a double glazing sales firm, that's a predominantly male environment, and so I guess you kind of get tough or sing. So mm. I think that's what she's had to do. And she sees herself as an absolute equal to the men, which mm. is great. Well, and what the, she does uh, have over all of them is the fashion. Yeah. <laughs> because she does, the you know, where she's uh, talking to everybody. And when you've got this bright yellow power suit with huge shoulder pads, I felt... I felt like I could take over the world. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it really helped, yeah. Well, maybe we should bring it all back. I know. Maybe well, they we sort, of, uh, sort of tried, I think it is. But actually, <laughs> I've got to say, though, since, you know, sort of 2018, when you're talking about taking over the world, you say you have had the best year ever. Oh, wow. And we sat down um, a, a moment ago in, in the break um, when you arrived and, and asked you whether or not you got bored with people introducing you as an Academy Award winner. And after that moment for you then then what happens and um, after we initially won and on the evening then it kind of goes bonkers for for, for a long time does like it months. in yeah. what way bonkers just everybody is offering you things like yeah. jobs or well, writing just wanted or... wanted to sort of talk to you yeah and, and figure out how you i guess how we did it we still don't know <laughs> i don't know the answer to that um we wanted to talk to us about um you know the the journey and what happened and of course because of the way we made the movie it was a crowdfunded film and, yeah and so I think we, we managed to inspire people, or the filmmakers and things, did, totally. as, as to what was possible and stuff. And well, even more so, a year later, does it sink in a bit more? Because I imagine you were you, you weren't there this year, so you were uh, you were at home, I guess, watching it. Did you were thinking this time last year we were there? I was up there making a speech. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, what happens? It, we, we're members of the Academy now, which is crazy. So we're in a so, such a fortunate position that we get to vote and look at watch the films and. I, we just can't believe it. We, we watched, we voted thinking this this was us last year. Yeah. Someone sat on their sofa watching our film. And well, I mean, oh, The Silent Child I mean, so did, uh, did have a huge impact and it's something that is very uh, close to your heart mm. and you signed your speech and you know how important a good speech is because of Livy Coleman's speech this year. I love this. And everyone talking it around the world. Um, and do you do you think that this um, raising awareness for for issues for uh, families who have maybe a deaf child or or, or or getting into that sort of thing, are you helping that? I'd like to think so. I Does mean, the I, Oscars I feel like... make a big difference? I think that... What we did was put that subject on arguably one of the biggest stages in the world at that time. And, and it's a subject that largely isn't talked about. Like I've said a million times, you can't see it and it doesn't kill you. So it's really hard to get attention for that subject. Mm. So I, I feel very proud that we 
we felt like we started what was what felt like a national dialogue and people were talking about it for all of a sudden people knew about sign language and wanted to know more and wanted to learn and things well that was probably the best part we had so many lovely messages from parents of deaf children and yeah. things saying this has really touched us we're now learning sign language and we're that's the best no, bit. That's brilliant. And for you, um, the, I mean, obviously this is the acting side of things, but the writing continues. It does. Um, and you and your husband. Congratulations, husband by the, the way. Well, was. So we just had our friends and family there. That's yeah. So nice. But you are writing again, and uh, there is a there's a new new movie. There is. There's a feature film. I mean. They take such a long time um, uh, to, to make, um, but we're in development, uh, you know, early early development, and we're working hard on that, and that's so fulfilling for, for both of us to be able to do that. And it is, it's not a follow-on from The Silent Child, but it is loosely around the same subject and something that's super important to us both, mm. so... But yeah. a way off yet, because, as you say, it takes, oh, it takes, takes quite a while. We just it's read that The Favourite applied for... Uh, funding, apparently, in, like, for early funding in 2003. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> so really? Early, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that so is a long time. That's a very long time. But, you know, <laughs> as you write, you can sit there and you can look up... On the bookshelf? Are they on the bookshelf? They Where are, are they? they? on our bookshelf, yeah. Oh, yeah. so lovely. Who polishes them? Um, neither of us, actually, and we probably should. <laughs> I'm sure they're all grubby and got so many fingerprints on, cos every time someone Everyone comes over wants to... <laughs> yeah, of course they would. Yeah. Um, it's lovely to see you, it Rachel. Really uh, White Gold is tonight at 10 on BBC Two, and thank it you is. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me.